Um, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is the third video in a multi-lesson series called How to Learn Guitar Chords, and today we're talking about guitar chord tones. This is all about being able to label and identify chord tones on the guitar, and the chord tones are the specific notes within a chord. This is so powerful and so useful to be able to do on the guitar to take a chord shape, any chord shape, doesn't have to be one you've ever played before, and be able to map out, identify, label, find the notes, and know the anatomy of the chord, exactly what is what and why, and therefore why it sounds the way it does. To put it another way, not being able to do this will seriously hold you back. And I know this because I've been teaching for almost 20 years, and I've seen many, many times that someone with even a lot of playing experience will hit this wall, hit this level of frustration, get stuck on not being able to create any chord they want with the theory knowledge that we're learning in this video. So I'm giving you right now everything you need to be able to do this. And hang around because I have a really fun challenge at the end of the video that I think you'll enjoy. So check this out. Here are the 14 chords that we went over in the first lesson in this series. And there's a playlist in the description that will link to all the videos in the whole series. And so catch up on those if you need to. This, this process, this series is gonna get to some really cool stuff, but they all the lessons build on each other, so you have to definitely watch each one to make sense of the next one. So check that out if you need to. Now, now take a look at these chords. This is how we presented them before, and now here are the same chords with all the chord tones labeled. So this is how we wanna see the fretboard. This is how we want to see chords and chord tones and all the notes that are available to us while we're playing the guitar anytime. We just wanna know the fretboard this way. The question is, if you know chords already, but you don't see the fretboard this way, but you don't know what the individual chord tones are, what's a method that we can use to identify them without having to look something up? Well, it's very simple, and when you're through with this lesson, you will know just how to do it. And notice, I'm not talking about letter names here. I'm not talking about the individual note names, the letter note names of the chord, because if you do that, you would get just a single spelling of a chord in one place off one root, and that's the only place that that applies. What we're doing is much, much more powerful and much more useful. We are using the chord tone labels. These are the interval numbers based on the music theory of the chord structure. This way, the structure that we label actually applies to the same chord all over the guitar, no matter what root that you play it off of. In the second lesson in this series, the one right before this lesson, I taught you how to use the structure of the major scale, knowing just the number structure, the theory of the major scale, to play in any key all over the guitar, crossing strings, up and down, anywhere you want, keeping track of what number you're on. In a scale context, we call those numbers scale degrees. But the same numbers, when they line up with a note that's in a chord, we call it a chord tone. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take chord shapes, we're gonna find the root and call it one, and then we're just gonna use that method of being able to play the major scale knowing what number you're on that we learned in the previous lesson, and we're going to find where those numbers line up with the other notes that are played in the chord, and voila, you have your chord tone labels. It is as simple as that, but let's do some examples because there'll be a few little things that we can get hung up on if we don't go over some of the details. So let's take this A chord. That was our first chord on the list from the first lesson in this series. <laughs> For all those chords that we learned in the first lesson, the root happens to be the lowest note. We call that a root position chord. The root does not have to be the lowest note in a chord. It's perfectly fine the root is somewhere else. If the root is not the lowest note, your process for finding chord zones is exactly the same. You're just gonna have to count down to find any notes that are below the root. In this case, we know all of those first chords I gave you, the root is on the bottom, so what's the lowest note? We do need to identify that letter name. Um, because it's the name of the chord, the rest of everything else are just numbers. Okay, it's the chord A major, and the lowest note is this, and that is an open A string. So because that's the root, we call it number one. Now, simply count off of that note using the major scale structure exactly like I had you do in the last lesson, where three and four are a half step apart, and seven and one are a half step apart, and everything else is a whole step distance, and we learned how to cross strings with either a whole step or a half step so we can get across strings, and that's the trickiest part of that about that method. And you just do this crossing strings where you need to until you lined up with the next note in the chord. So we can just see from the chord diagram that the next note is the second fret on the fourth string. We need to find that by counting up from the low note. Let's do it. This is one, up to two is a whole step, up to three is a whole step, three to four is gonna be a half step. So, okay, there's a note right next to it. All right, we know if we kept going on this string, that four to five would be a whole step, but now we're way over here and we need to be finding this note that's the second fret on the fourth string. So let's cross strings now. 
we're gonna go four, we found four, and we need to remember our whole step shape. And there we are, we're on it. So whatever number that was, one, two, three, four, five, it is the fifth of the chord. One, five. I'll quickly demonstrate through the rest. We know we need to find the next note. I'm on five. Five to six is a whole step. Six to seven. Let's cross strings because we need to be over here. So six to seven. I'm gonna cross with my whole step shape that we learned. Okay, and then seven to one is a half step. Oh, it's one. One, five, one. These are the chord tones. This is the, the root one. This is the fifth. This is the root. Again, it's one. Okay, let's keep going. One to two is a whole step. Okay, two to three is a whole step. Now I'm kind of uh, far away again, so let's cross strings, and we need to cross strings with a whole step shape. Three, uh, two to three, and there we go, it's three. One, five, one, three. Okay, what's that open string? Three to four is the half step. Four to five. Oh, well, if you do any tuning by ear, uh, you probably know this fret here is the same as your open string, so we could also think of it that way. Or cross strings from four, it's gonna be this distance to five. One, five, one, three, five. Those are the chord tone labels of A major. This might be totally new to you, or this might seem really basic because we're just analyzing a normal A chord, but that exact process is gonna be crazy handy when you're trying to figure out what chord tones uh, are existing in some weird inversion shape or some slash chord that you're working on from a song or like a major seven sharp 11 chord, you know, what's what in the chord. Um, this is the exact process, no matter how complex and weird it gets. Okay, this is very crucial. Do not worry about being able to see what those chord tones are all at once at first, of course. It's really important that you actually take that time to get there, to count up from the root if you don't see it. If you do that enough, you definitely will see just automatically, oh, every time I count from here, this happens to be five. So you just start to see this is the five. You can just start to have these shortcuts that you jump to and then count from there instead of always counting from the bottom. But it won't happen at first. And you just have to do that process. Let it be slow, let it be hard. The harder it is for you and the slower it is for you, the more you're gaining from it. And that's amazing practice. Don't ever call it cheating. People always say, oh, I cheated because I, I counted up, I cheated, I didn't really know it was there. That's that's not cheating, that's how you learn. That's how you get to the point of just knowing it. You know, would you say, oh, I don't, it was cheating that I learned how to walk because I crawled first. You know, you gotta take the step to actually get there. When we don't look for shortcuts, when we don't take shortcuts and look things up all the time, when we take this longer process that takes more patience and that's annoying and it's frustrating and hard to do and, and we wish we were better, that's when it really sticks. That's when we get long-term knowledge. That's when we get stuff that just seems obvious to us because we've done it enough and lived it. So if you do this enough, you will start to see pretty quickly actually some consistencies that are just always there. These will be interval shapes um, along strings. Just like we learned our whole step shape, that's always a whole step. Check this out. If we're on that A chord and you know this is one that we've mapped out and then this is five, well, if you have one on the third string, five is always on the same fret, the string below. One, five, one, five. If this is one, this is five. If this is one, this is five. If this is one, this is five. And that actually is on other strings too. If this is one, that's five. If this is one, that's five. If this is one, that's five. So it is, that's why these numbers are so powerful. Those are all different pitches or letter names, but you can start to see the whole guitar this way with relationships. And the relationships are crucial because that's actually what makes a melody or a song or a chord progression sound the way it does. You can hear happy birthday in any key and, and definitely know that it was happy birthday. All right, the next chord that is on the original sheet that I gave you is B major. And it's the same physical shape as A major, just that you have to also move the open string up to fret two. Well, because it's the same shape, the numbers are all gonna be the same too. This is one, this is five, this is one, this is three. If you played that note, it would be five. One, five, one, three. That's the third, that's the root, that's the fifth. That... So again, how powerful this is that it gets to move around like this is just awesome. I'll quickly show you how it works on the C major chord. Okay, the lowest note is the root. There's one, okay, one to two, whole step, two to three, I'm gonna cross strings, and there it is. That's the chord, that's the note we we're looking for. Now we have to find this open third string. Okay, three to four is a half step. Okay, four to five is a whole step, but that is the same as the open string or the whole step shape over to the open string. There it is, one, three, five. Okay, five to six is a whole step, six to seven. Okay, seven to one, crossing strings, half step. I know I'm going over that quickly, but that's why I'm doing this whole series because I can just say, hey, you should know that because we talked about it in lesson two. So 
there's the root. One, three, five, one, one, two, crossed over to the note we're looking for, and three. One, two, three, same note as that open string. One, three, five, one, three. Okay, now we have all of those. Now, what about minor chords? Let's do a D minor. This is very important. I want you to, no matter what type of chord, still use the major scale as your measuring stick. We don't need to learn a million scales to measure against a million chords. We can just use that one scale and then alter it if something doesn't fit. So that's exactly what's going to happen with the minor scale. So even if you're doing a diminished chord or um, augmented chord or anything uh, that it, it has alterations all over the place, use the major scale to measure against it and then change it accordingly. Let's check it out. So we have one, two, three, I'm just counting up the scale, okay? Four, four to five crossing strings because I needed to land on that note that I needed for D minor, excellent. Five to six, okay? Six to seven crossing strings, I wanna get over to that next note. Everything's clear so far, one, five, one. It all fits with the major scale. Okay, now one to two to three, okay? Cross strings to three, one, two, three. That note is not in the chord. It's this note that we need. So we got there and we say, no, actually that's a half step up from where we need. So, oh, that label is flat three. So that's how we do it. One, two, three. Oh, it's flat three. You just see it's right next to that. So if there's a flat seven in the chord, you count up to seven, you see, oh, no, this seven is not in here. It's the one next to it that I'm looking for. Oh, obviously that is flat seven. So now we have root, fifth, root, flat third. You could just say third of the chord and it's the third of a minor chord, but I always specify just to be as detailed as possible. I'll say flat three, one, five, one, flat three. Okay, let's do a quick version on F sharp minor. That's one of the chords I gave you in the first lesson. Okay, I'm just gonna do this really quick just to go through it. The root is the lowest note. One, two, uh, major third in the major scale. Four, five, just counting up. One, five, great. Five, six, seven, one, one, five, one. I'm just finding those notes I need. One, uh, one to two, whole step. Uh, two, two, major third, and that clashes because we need this note. So I went one, two, three. Oh, flat three. One, five, one, flat three. Perfect. Okay. I'm gonna go back to three to keep counting. Three to four is a half step. Four to five, crossing strings. Oh, that's five. One, five, one, flat three, five. Five, six, keep counting up the scale. Cross strings to seven, and one. That's one. One, five, one, flat three, five, one. There it is, now we have those. And we might forget them right away once you find them, and you gotta find them again and find them again. But again, let yourself find them from, from counting as many times as you need to until it, until it starts to stick, because it's there's so much overlap with how all the chords behave. All those chords had a five. You'll start to get, it'll become really obvious where the five is or where certain uh, interval distances are. So a natural question that comes up is, how do you know to call it flat three and not sharp two? Because that that note that is, in that minor chord is in between those two. So how do you know that? Well, we're looking for one, three, five, and seven. These are the notes that pop out to us as, as chord tones. Sometimes seven, none of these chords I gave you so far have seven in it, but one, three, and five especially, and then seven if that's in there as well. And so if, for now, there's gonna be some, some exceptions later, but for now, if it's close to one of those, it's it, we're looking for filling out the chord with some kind of one, some kind of three, some kind of five, some kind of seven, if there's a seven. So for now, if there's a note that's right below five, you'd call it flat five. If there's a note that's right above five, you'd call it sharp five, unless there's already a natural five in there. So if there were already a natural three in that D minor chord, then it would be, you would call that other note, if it was also in there, you'd call it sharp two, which is a type of chord tone that's called an extension, and we actually would call it sharp nine. And don't sweat at all about what I just said because I have a whole lesson later in the series on what extensions are and how to use them. So for now, I just want you to, to say, okay, cool, I'm looking for ones, I'm looking for threes, I'm looking for fives, and I'm looking for sevens if they exist, and you want to alter those if you need to alter them. And then if there's something, like let's say you have a natural five, and then you find one that's like a sharp five, you wouldn't call it sharp five, you'd call it flat six. For now, call it flat six. Later, when we learn about extensions, we're gonna call that same note flat 13. That's just nomenclature stuff. Don't worry if you're calling it flat six or flat 13. Right now, you're still understanding the structure, you're still understanding how it's built, you're doing all the right things. It's just labeling after that. 
So really that's all there is to it. And you'll hear me say this all the time, let it be hard, let it be difficult, let it be slow. The more you let your practicing be that way with whatever you're trying to learn, the more you're gaining, the more it's a gold mine when you find something that is kind of challenging for yourself. So you want it to be that. Um, I'm saying that just in case, because uh, I don't want you to try this and be like, whoa, this is taking too long. Good, 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 good. If it's quick for you, that's that's nice. You're getting the results you want. But then if, you, if you're looking for improving, we need to push the boundaries a little bit. So homework quiz challenge for you here. I have a chord shape that is on the screen right now. And I want you to use the method that we just learned to label the chord tones. And don't worry about what the chord is called, like the official name of it, just label the chord tones accurately. I have the root labeled for you, the one, and you have to find everything else from there. Just write your answer in the comments. All you have to do is write the numbers from the lowest string to the highest string or the, from the thickest string to the thinnest string. Just like I listed out with all those chords, like the F sharp minor, I said one, five, one, flat three, five, one. And obviously don't look at what anyone else wrote before writing your answer in. If I get any submissions, I'll give a shout out to people who got it right in a future video. Great job on your progress so far. Please subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for the rest of this series. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about the collection of chords that exist within a key so we can have even more mastery of the music theory, this time about chords that sound good together and chord progressions and why they work that way. Can't wait to see you in that next lesson. Happy chord labeling and thanks so much.